For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to another episode of Around the World in 8 Minutes, a show by People's Dispatch. In this show, we bring you stories of struggle and resistance against authoritarian repression and capitalist exploitation. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the resistance by students of India's Jawaharlal Nehru University against a proposed fee hike and various restrictions by the administration. In our second story, we'll look at the massacre of an indigenous leader and four indigenous guards in Colombia. And finally, We'll go to Lebanon, where after days of protest, the Prime Minister was forced to resign. We begin with the student strike at the New Delhi-based Jawaharlal Nehru University in India, which entered its third day on Thursday. The strike was called against a proposed fee hike and efforts to privatise hostel services to the installation of water and electricity meters. The students are also opposing restrictions imposed by the university administration. These restrictions include dress codes, hostel and library curfew timings, as well as restrictions on the access of public spaces like the famous Parthasarthi Rock area on campus. According to the new measures, the hostel rate would increase by a whooping amount of 2,000 rupees, which is around 28 US dollars. This is in addition to, impo the, to the decision to impose water and electricity charges. On Wednesday evening, a massive protest broke out at one of the girls' hostels, Koina, against a new draft hostel manual, which was passed by the university. The students and the students' union condemned the university's action of calling in the police force during the protest at the hostel. The proposed measures were passed in the Interhall administration meeting by the JNU administration on Monday. The IHA or the Interhall administration is responsible for managing and running hostels on the campus. The administration arbitrarily decided to convene the IHA meeting to pass these draconian measures without allowing, allowing the mandated representation from the JNU Students' Union or the JNU-SU. In an inspiring form of resistance, JNU students double-locked the office of the Dean of Students, which looked into students' affairs, noting that the behaviour of the Dean is unbecoming of JNU staff. Last week, the university administration had attempted to double-lock the Students' Union office, saying that the union election held in September is not recognised. After massive resistance from students, the administration backed down. In September, a united left front panel had managed to secure a massive victory in the union elections, defeating the far right Akhil Bharati Vidyarthi Parishad. Jawaharlal Nehru University is a government funded institution in India and is recognized for its academic excellence and progressive campus politics. The university fee structure is highly subsidized and is known for quality and affordable higher education, which is accessible to the poorest of the poor in the country. The semester fee in JNU is around $4 while the hostel fee for a semester is just around $10. The university has a long history of students' resistance against various attempts by the administration to increase the fee and do away with progressive policies, which have been the bedrock of affordable higher education. Here is a look at some of the protest videos. In Colombia, the rampant persecution and assassination of indigenous people continues. On October 29th, four members of the indigenous Guardia and an indigenous authority were killed in an armed attack in the Taqueyo town of the Toribio municipality in the Cauca department in Colombia. In addition, six other people were seriously injured. The Association of Indigenous Cabildos of Toribio, Taqueyo and San Francisco, Project NASA, through an official statement, said that the unidentified armed men Allegedly, members of the Dagoberto Ramos dissident group ambushed the bus in which the indigenous guards were travelling and opened fire indiscriminately against them. The association reported that the attack continued for more than 10 minutes and the attackers even fired at the ambulances transporting the injured people to the hospital. The association called on human rights organisations, international organisations and the national government to pronounce, accompany and support the NASA people. Among those killed in the ambush were Christina Bautista, leader of the NASA indigenous community and members of the indigenous guard, Azdrubal Kayapu, Heliodoro Finescu, Jose Gerardo Soto and James Wilfredo Soto. The Regional Indigenous Council of Cauca also condemned a massacre perpetrated by the armed group against the indigenous community. The CRIC demanded that the national government guarantee the life, 
the right to life and physical integrity of the indigenous people. The National Indigenous Organization of Colombia also denounced the massacre and held a press conference on October 30th to reject the ceaseless aggression against Colombia's indigenous people. During the press conference, the indigenous leaders held President Ivan Duque's administration responsible for the massacre and genocide and said that it had failed to provide the necessary security to the country's indigenous population, despite constant denouncements from indigenous organizations over threats to their physical safety. The organization demanded the immediate resignation of the ministers of defense and interior, who they claim have done nothing to prevent the persistence violence in the region. The organization also gave the call for a national mobilization for life on November 8th. Senator Gustavo Bolivar and Aida Avea called on people to take part in the vigil in the evening, the Plaza de Bolivar, to commemorate the victims of the massacre. Two weeks ago, the CRIC had also denounced the murder of Toribio Canovas, an indigenous guard in Taqueo. Earlier, in the month of August, number of incidents of violent killings of indigenous guards and leaders were registered in Cauca. According to the ONIC, in 2019, more than 120 indigenous people have been killed in the country. Cauca is one of the departments most affected by the armed group violence in the country, where indigenous people are the main victims. The indigenous Guardia is a humanitarian mechanism of civil resistance of indigenous communities of North Cauca that is spread to indigenous, Afro-descendant and peasant communities across the country. The members of the indigenous Guardia defend the ancestral territories and people from actors that attack them. That is the reason why they have become the main target of drug trafficking, illegal mining and other paramilitary groups operating in the country. Since Duque took office in August 2018, the humanitarian crisis in Colombia has escalated not only for indigenous communities but for all those who fight for peace, structural change and rights. Instead of taking structured measures to eradicate violence from indigenous communities, Duque has stigmatized these communities and their social struggles. In our last story in Lebanon, Prime Minister Saad Hariri submitted his resignation to President Michel on October 29th, fulfilling one of the main demands raised by the ongoing protests in the country. The people welcomed the resignation but have refused to end their 13-day-old protest until all their demands are met. Although reports say that many protesters have lifted some blockades at several places after an appeal by the army. Popular protests erupted across Lebanon on October 17th in opposition to the government's move to introduce several new taxes including a $6 monthly tax for calls on popular social media apps. Though the government announced the withdrawal of all those taxes, the protest has since turned against the entire political class in the country, holding them responsible for the economic problems and blaming them for indulging in a massive loot of public money. The Saad Hariri government had tried to placate the protest last week when he announced a series of reforms, including cutting the salaries of most of the government officials and politicians and initiating certain welfare measures for the poor and unemployed. However, despite the announcement of these measures, protesters refused to move away from the streets and even intensified the agitation while giving a call for a general strike. Most of the educational, financial and commercial activities in the country have been shut for nearly a week and protesters have blocked the main streets and roads. Though people in the streets express their happiness after the resignation of Hariri, it is unlikely that they will end soon. The protesters have been demanding large-scale systemic changes in the country's polity under a transitional technocratic government. Though no formal demands have been presented, anger against the confessional representation system established after the civil war years as a compromise among the warring factions is obvious. According to the confessional compromises reached during the Taif Agreement in 1989, Lebanon has devised a system according to which major sects in the Lebanese society get a quota in parliament. The major political posts in the country are also allotted on a sectarian basis. For example, the Prime Minister of the country will always be a Sunni, the President a Christian and the Speaker of the Parliament a Shia. Protesters think that such fixed quotas on the basis of sectarian lines have kept the country divided, helping the political class exploit these divisions for their gain. They held that such divisions are breeding the corruption and inefficiency, which in turn is responsible for the economic problems of the country. Lebanon has a high massive public debt and increasing youth unemployment. The government has often been blamed in the past for the failure of basic public service delivery, including its inability to deal with last month's massive forest fires. That's all we have for this episode of Around the World in 8 Minutes. To read more about these stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching.
Bandeira.